My name is Sylvester Barambuzo and I'm from APM Systems Hungary. Uh, I'm a software developer there and we're trying to <coughs> deliver some enterprise solutions for the world. And therefore, I'm here to deliver you some kind of uh, knowledge, some kind of best practices how to use async and await because I know there is uh, the async and await keywords will be soon or later be introduced into C++ and therefore I, I intend to make these mistakes that uh, can be lurking around uh, before you do. So uh, this, this talk will be about this topic. And therefore, even before we are, we are talking about this async await, uh, I'll be talking a little bit about the, the test basis in this pattern on which there is uh, .NET solution are based upon. And uh, let's just start with the threads. The threads are kind of costly features when you're trying to instance a thread uh, and you try to move your your solution uh, in between the threads, it will also cost you a little bit uh, when you are trying to do some context switches. And therefore, it uh, kind of get hard to handle them. Uh, when you delete them, it will leave you uh, for about uh, inconsistent state of the memory. And therefore, it's uh, pretty dangerous to handle them. And therefore, on the other side, there are tests who are absolutely not bound to the physical resource of the machine, they are just uh, representing the job that you want to do. And this is what you exactly want to do when you are trying to do some asynchronous uh, programming. And therefore, it uh, implements some kind of a thread pool, and those threads are already there. Therefore, you don't have to pay the context switch, and it, they will be automatically scheduled by the test scheduler, and therefore, you don't have to do with them anything at all. What those tests can do for you? They can envelope your test in, into their own type, and therefore they are capable of exception handling. They can uh, report their status to you, for example, if they are done, or if they are canceled, or if they are running as an exception. And you can optionally can cancel them, and they can rep report for you their, their progress. And this is an important thing just uh, every type of programmers would need. However, how do you want to create a test? My colleagues from Long Beach also showed us some way the uh, test, fa test factory to start new, which is kind of uh, the suggested solution to do so, because it will be automatically synchronized. Uh, you can do it uh, by yourself, which you just uh, creating a test and just run it. Even you can start it uh, just by their own. And uh, the thing is that uh, when you're starting a test, that uh, the threads will be starting to race, to call it, and will try to run it for themselves. However, you have to pay the synchronization at, at the start. <coughs> and uh, they have such kind of trigger methods, something like wait and result, where, where those tests will be blocked, and therefore your run will be stopped there. All right. That's what we know, that this is the first place where we can just encounter our first problem, even before uh, we are starting to using async away, and uh, your test at some point will won't be completed, even you are not aware of it, uh, because maybe you forgot to catch an exception, and therefore when you have some faults in your code, it won't be even stopped at the, the point, because uh, because uh, those points where the result will be set back and returned, it won't be run. And to handle this in my uh, in my uh, code, what you see is some task completion source, uh, which is designed to uh, to just give you back and envelope your your code, your synchronous code, into a task. And therefore, your methods can explicitly call and control this test, and therefore you just have to give back the reference of it. However, this is the first thing that you can do, just set the exception, don't, be, don't forget about this, because it, it will cause you a little lurking box in your code. Okay, right, we are now can complete our tasks, 
and therefore we can start to talk about our async and await keywords. What async and await can do is that uh, the async keyword can decorate your methods or lambda expressions or even uh, anonymous methods that you can have and uh, they can call uh, without blocking the caller thread and therefore what you, they are really good for us that they can I just said that before they got to do some noise so what they can do is that you, you can absolutely forget about uh, those method delegates that you have to pass uh, you remember from the task creation and when you say I want to wait then uh, then you basically just say that okay I'm down here just uh, give me some kind of a response when, when you are alright and I, I will yield back my my run to the caller and therefore it will be just say that I'm down here alright this is several pros for us for example we don't have to uh, take the threads responsibilities and therefore we have absolutely no cost for test creation test creation of thread creation sorry because uh, this is automatically done by the framework and we will see uh, really a similar code when what we would, would like to see when we are doing in a synchronous matter and this will uh, leads us to an extremely fast development for some kind this uh, code is being done for some five seconds or something like that and what, what is ex extremely useful for us because if we would like to create an, an a thread matter then it would take us uh, for example an hour and therefore our, our results are already there with this kind of method However, the, these uh, solutions have cons as well for example it will take uh, causes a computational overhead and we will absolutely not have info on what kind of threads we are running on and uh, there is a chance that even our test won't finish on this thread where, we, where it started so therefore it will be really difficult to debug and I'll show you how difficult to debug it is it will do something like this alright so the normal call and normal processing is just uh, getting into the first line of the code which will call this HTTP client which is an IO method and it's useful to do async calls on, on IO and therefore it just normally call this async method which will absolutely have the sum point and await in it and it will return return the call uh, yielding back the control and therefore a normal process can flow again and we can do some independent work in between however when it, at some point it will return to us and when it returns then, then it can uh, move forward and therefore you will have some confusing stacks and uh, a really a loss of control and lose absolutely the casualty chain but uh, before we are uh, going on this, uh, into its uh, problems I like to do uh, some side trip that uh, what actually happens luckily uh, C sharp is a, a really high level language and therefore we can decompile what's, uh, what's been generated by the compiler and this is actually the decompiled code what we had from this code and what the compiler generates for, uh, generates for us is some kind of an async state machine which will be uh, representing our asynchronous call and in its async state machine there will be a move next method and therefore in, in every await that, uh, that is our method had will be represented by a state and when a state change occurs then uh, this move next method will be called and therefore uh, this is how state machine will progress it's uh, kind of hard to understand at first sight however it's not that uh, problematic however the only takeaway message is here that from every method you make there will be a CO class generated out of it and this will cause you a computational overhead alright and this is the first pitfall that we have arrived yet and so just consider here is our async method with a void return and it's just a frozen exception for us and 
The question is that will this code pre-fail? Because here where we call it, we will try to catch the exception. The answer is no. This async void is, uh, even though it's useful for event handlers, it will just do some fire and forget mechanism. And, and we, this code, whenever this operation was inside the async void, will be never catch before, and this line will be dying very miserably. Luckily, I have the recommendation from the Microsoft talk, Microsoft MVP talk, and I have the exact slide with me. It was the recommendation for this, and that was the exact slide out of this MVP talk. Just forget about to do it, and please put the task and return the task from an async method. All right, however, it's not uh, stopping us here that uh, we can uh, decorate async with a lambda. As you see, I, I, I call the lambda here, the lambda function here, which will just uh, sleep for a second, and uh, this time method will calculate the time for us and how long that did it run. Uh, what do you think that, uh, what the result will be from this? It's one second. Okay, let's see, uh, here is our, or imaginary debug window. No, it won't wait. Why? Why? Because this async lambda will be mapped by our compiler to an async void. Why? Because this action here, what we're getting is a type of a method delegate which our, which our time method accepts uh, does not uh, handle the task as well. So right now what we have to do is even to change the signature of our time, uh, time calculating method to catch the task, which is this kind of a functor which returns us the task. And therefore, we just didn't have to take right now the difference in between the lambdas or even the colors. Therefore, of course, the original method won't be matters. But wait, there's more about this async lambdas. For example, if you call, as I said, the suggested method, the task factory, and you call here an async lambda, what do you think the type of the u will be? As you see here, right, it returns some kind of an integer, so it will be returning us some task in results, some task integer. So what will be the result of this? The result will be what? No, the task will be task and task in, in integer. So it will wrap our async lambda into, into a task again, so it will be task in task in integer, therefore it won't be starting again. It will do nothing. So therefore we have to avoid this task nesting, and for that we have this beautiful unwrap method that will do the trick for us. Just don't forget to do it, okay? Okay, the other point is how we would synchronize our tasks. Right now, or the, here on my snippet, I, I prepared for you, I, I call the task, I, I put the, on the console that started, and wait for the task to finish, and I say it's complete. Okay, inside our async task, however, here is the thread, thread.sleep. And if you remember what happened, here, this will be the, the result because we do some synchronous synchronous uh, uh, stuff to do be even before the await call. Just to be, uh, be warned, even before you are doing some kind of a hard work and you're trying to delegate to another thread or you're trying to delegate to the I/O or something, you don't forget to yield back the yield back the control for your folder as before, and this will just this is just a method to do this. However, I I assume that you will take the first debate even before the hard work just set to do. All right, and here is my I think the hardest slide to understand. All right now here I, what I made is uh, some kind of a web API. Uh, with an ASP.NET uh, call, mm -hmm. and the problem was here that uh, this call will be will be running into a deadlock. Really, just a simple thing and nothing to do with it. How how this is uh, 
How is this calling? That's because uh, when I calling this uh, synchronous get, what I did was as I, I synchronized my tasks uh, on the ASP.NET request context. Therefore, therefore, uh, what it does, it will go uh, call the request context thread. It say that to just run my test, my test will start, and here the client will transfer instantly. Therefore, the await will yield back yield back us to here, and this will in here where we're trying to uh, wait for the result. The the original call will block the context thread, and therefore here when the eventually when we or result will came back, what will happen? Our context thread will won't be ready, and this will be waiting for the context thread as well, which is kind of bad because we, we will be running into deadlock. We can do that. We call, call the configure await false after every await we do. Uh, this is just a hack because uh, uh, you would have to do it all the way down on your second part or third part API or, or every library is your time and you won't be able to do that because we will use binaries. So you will see a lot of suggestions just to use this, but please don't. The correct uh, solution for this is that you can define an asynchronous test, and therefore, if you are calling from the top level that it's your text asynchronously, therefore, uh, you absolutely changing what your your uh, waiting behavior, and therefore, every await, even the first before you introduce right now, will be an asynchronous wait. Okay, and right now I I arrive for my my favorite one. And the last thing I think so, with which I want to show you, is that uh, what will happen if you if you mix the await with the the compound assignment. Here I, I prepared you some kind of an accumulator, and here right now is there is Bob and Alice, and uh, Bob calls the, his test B two, and Alice will call his, her test B four, and right now I. I I get the sum. What will be the result of this call? Because right now the accumulator we try to summarize up their results. The problem here is that M sum will be read to the read to the to the stack once exactly, and therefore when I call this add method, M sum will be read to the test uh, stack, and therefore it will yield back your yield the control, and after that, when when Bob will just fill it up with two, Alice will find also zero here and will navigate Bob's results. And therefore, what you have to do, that would, you have to introduce a local variable, uh, which is absolutely good. You just don't want to uh, use some variable that uh, parallel tasks can, can reach. And this makes you uh, really happy. All right, so I already got to the, my conclusion. So what's the message of this talk? Is that please don't forget to complete your task if you are using some kind of async await. And watch out for the signatures and change them everywhere, especially where the voids are. And be aware what your synchronization context is. And therefore, just watch out for those special cases as well. And with this, I hope I haven't uh, let you to more of the questions, and I'd like to thank you for the time. That's it. Okay, thank you very much. Um, we have time for one or two short questions before the lunch break. No. Uh, at what granularity will the Introduction of the state machine that controls an async void for uh, the an, a computational overhead, I assume. So, what kind so of computational overhead does it will cause you? At, at what granularity will it uh, impo really impose more computation than what you gain by doing async? Oh, well, basically, in, uh, in .NET, uh, the, the async await uh, was. Uh, Kind of there for for I/O operations. And therefore, if it, uh, 
Uh, I, I had a, a link in my talk. Uh, uh, I'd like to get. Hopefully. I'm uh, opening up. Uh, here's the link. What I have, and this is our colleague, and he actually tried to uh, calculate the, the overhead, what it does, and it was uh, kind of a tremendous. So I, I, I really suggest you, so he said he done some kind of a, a plus equal S in point, yeah, S in point, see, uh, it, it was, uh, it was seen by, I think it was 10 times much more the, for the, this kind of a, a really small uh, method that we call, as you see, even 17 times as much. However, this is a constant wrap up. So if uh, I assume that uh, maybe you should try it to, to, to check on smaller environments, and therefore if uh, if uh, your code will call, your code call will uh, exceed this limit, then you just easily can transform your code into a state. The reason I asked is because I saw uh, I uh, checked multiple async Ernest programming uh, talks uh, regarding C++ and its uh, technical specifications, so it didn't make it into 17, C++ 17, but. Uh, both the Clang and the Visual Studio implementation, they say that launching an asynchronous method and is uh, roughly on the, uh, it roughly takes as much time as invoking an ordinary function. So they say that it is completely fine to have millions of asynchronous tasks in flight at the time and it's, it would just execute like if you would invoke one, the same function one million times after the other. So that's why it's very interesting to see that in C sharp it has a very different impact on the performance. Well, well maybe in C++ it's a different implementation. You know that async methods can be uh, implemented in various ways, uh, such like reasonable methods or orbit callbacks. Uh, in the C++ uh, implementation will be smarter than an async state machine, then I assume that much of the problems will be get rid eventually. This is matters of the compiler. Okay, so let's take the speaker again.